Thank you, Jesus, for everyone who clicks on this video. Holy Spirit, I ask that you speak to me and through me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Now, as you can see by the title of this video, a lot of people's heart postures, their mentality, their thought process is stopping them. It is a hindrance to them. OK, and we've all deal with this. We've all had to deal with this. Right. This is something that is that is a struggle for literally every human being. Right. The Bible says that out of the heart flow, the issues of life. Right. <clears throat> the Bible says that the heart is very, very corrupt. It's like the most corrupt thing uh, um, about a human. Right. Jesus said that whatsoever a man treasureth, that where his heart will be also. And oftentimes it's so easy to treasure things that we are not supposed to treasure. Right. Whether it's greed and money and gain and, you know, uh, influence and Instagram, you know, what I'm saying wanted to fulfill our pleasures. Um, you know, all of these things, these can be treasures for us. Right. Social media, TV just uh hanging out with worldly friends being worldly right we may treasure all of these things okay and these things are in our heart and these things are in our way pretty much blocking us from propelling forward right and if this is something that you're struggling with then this is kind of the video for you and this is something to put things into perspective right how it's not up to you going to a certain church it's not up to a certain leader praying for you. It's not up to this certain epiphany uh, that you need to come into realization of or put it or maybe even you're in this mode where you're wait where you're like, I'm gonna wait till I get older um, to serve God and to get my life right. Right. At the um, th there is no right time and you don't know when you're when the end is going to come for you specifically. So. I would never suggest that you do that or had that mentality. But, you know, I was once had that mentality. So I do understand. Right. But at the basis of all these issues, it is your heart. It is literally your heart. OK. And see, what kind of brought me here is because I was reading in Acts. Right. And <clears throat> in Acts, there was an account where the Jews literally took Paul in. And they were accusing him of spreading heresy, right? Of spreading doctrine against uh, the Mosaic law and things of this nature. Because the Jews, they didn't believe in Jesus, right? They were Pharisees. Said they didn't believe in Jesus. They didn't believe that Jesus rose from the dead and died for everyone's sins. So what they did was they, they put him in courts. They beat him, you know, and they were uh, trying to have him judged, right? So what Paul did um, when he stood in front of like all of Israel, he stood in front of everybody. He literally told them his testimony. Okay. Now I want us to just listen to this. It's, it may be a, a bit long of what I'm reading, but you know, it's worth it. It's the word of God. And I believe that we all need a little bit of word in our life. So bear with me. Right. So this is, this is called Paul's testimony. This is when he's speaking his defense. He says, my defense, which I make now unto you, um, it says, and when they heard that he spoke in Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silent. And he said, I am verily a man, which am a Jew born in Tarsus, a city in Sicilia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers and was zealous toward God as you are, as you all are this day. So he's basically uh, relating to them. Right. And this was something that Paul did oftentimes in his ministry was that he would relate to people. He would adjust to whomever he may be speaking to. If he's speaking to the Romans, right, he can adjust to the Romans. If he's speaking to the Gentiles, he can, uh, you know, uh, adjust to the Gentiles. If he's speaking to the, to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he can adjust to them because he came from that background. One, he was a Roman. And for two, he, act, him, him, he himself was a Pharisee. This is what was one of the things about Paul that was so um, unique, right? And this is why God even used him, you know what I'm saying? So he says, and I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prison, both men and women. He's basically saying, I did what you did. I persecuted the church, right? Men and women. He says, it's also the high priest doth bear me witness and all the estate of the elders from whom also I received letters unto the brother, brethren and went to Damascus to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem, 
afford to be punished. So he says, I went to Damascus, right, on assignment to bring Christians to punishment. I was once you, basically is how he's starting out his defense. He says, and it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. And I fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? I answered, who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. So he's telling them of his experience. He's literally telling them his testimony. And it can be backed because there were people around him. And these people know that he used to be a Pharisee. Um, and he says, and they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spoke to me. So these people actually seen that light, but they could not hear the voice. Of course, the voice of God will be blocked to those who will not hear and will not receive. Remember, this is why Jesus said those who have eyes to see will see those who have ears to hear will hear. And if your heart is hardened, even when you see, even when you see, you still won't perceive. If your heart is hardened, even when you hear, you still won't understand. If your heart is hardened, if your heart is focused on fornication, if your heart is focused on masturbation, if your heart is focused on smoking weed, if your heart is focused on um, going out to the clubs, if your heart is focused on that female, if your heart is focused on worldly friends, right? You will see, but you will not perceive. You will hear, but you will not understand. You will know, you will know something, but you will not actually get it. You won't grasp it. Even though you know God's calling you, you know you're supposed to be doing something different, you still won't grasp it because your heart is far from God and you don't have a desire to change your heart. But once you actually realize this portion of, you know, trying to change, this is when you can actually make a change. But let's keep reading though, you know what I'm saying? Uh, um, and he says, and I said, what shall I do? So he says, I, so basically he's like, what should I do, Jesus? And the Lord said unto me, Arise and go into Damascus, and there shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for you to do. He says, And when I could not see for the glory of that light being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus, and one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. In the same hour, I looked up upon him. So Jesus um, spoke to him. Then he sent the disciple of God, Ananias. Ananias restored his sight, right? If you didn't know the story, you know, we're reading it now, and I'm just kind of breaking it down so you can understand. Because sometimes in the King James Version, it's hard to understand. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm explaining it. Then he goes on to say, and he said, the God of our fathers has chosen me. That, that, that I should know his will and see the just one and should hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto, unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now why tarriest thou arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of Jesus? And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I went, I went into a trance and saw him saying unto me, Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive my testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I am in, that I am prisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believe. And when the blood of thy martyr or Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. So Jesus actually warns him and tells him to, to get out of Jerusalem, tells him to go unto the Gentiles. And Paul's response is, but these people know that I used to beat Christians. These people know that I used to persecute the church. I believe the reason that he responded with that is because how could they not receive me when they know where I come from, when they know who I am? Remember, a prophet is not accepted in his hometown. Many times people won't believe you. They won't accept you, even if it's not your hometown. These people will not accept Paul because their hearts are so hardened. They don't want to believe the truth. They want to chase after their own way. Does that sound familiar? Right. Have you are you in this predicament where you want to continue to chase after your own way and not after the will of God? You know what I'm saying? It's easy to get caught like that. It's so easy, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, but let's keep going. So this is what the what they said. And they gave him audience audience unto his words and then lifted up their voices 
So this is the audience speaking, the people who just listened to his testimony. Again, know his background, right? Know what he used to do. They say, away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. So after telling them his testimony, after they understand who he was, who he used to be and who he is now, they disregarded everything, disregarded the evidence, disregarded the testimony, disregarded this man being so bold, bold enough to tell him this about Jesus, knowing the repercussions behind this. They still said he's not even fit to live and still went in their own way. And this is why I say your heart is stopping you. And many times we don't, we want to put it off on someone else because it's easy. But the Bible says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. At the end of the day, it is you who is going to have to attest to the things that you chose to um, treasure in your heart. Right? So if this is you and you, and you know, and God has showed up in your life, God has, you, you've seen the testimonies, right? You know that God is is pulling at your heart, but yet you continue to go into your iniquities. If this is you, this is your opportunity to repent. I'm sorry, excuse me. Say, Lord, I just repent for fornicating. Lord Jesus, I just repent for masturbating. Lord Jesus, I just repent for, for you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? Begin to go in and say, God, just please live in me. Ask God, how can I search you? How can I become more like you, right? begin to do these things begin to get into the word of god okay begin to try and just consecrate your flesh for an hour for two hours for 30 minutes begin to work on these things and when i say consecrate your flesh for an hour i'm talking about just praying you know what i'm saying continually in the, in in the spirit in the holy spirit if you don't have the holy spirit right ask for the holy spirit just continue to stay in thanksgiving right and i'm talking about like quoting scriptures for just you know another 30 minutes right if you're gonna do an hour do 30 minutes of prayer 30 minutes of just you know reading the word of god and just allowing it to literally read you to be honest because the word of god is how God literally speaks to you, okay? The whole, one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to remind us of all the words of God. So when we read the word of God, a lot of times the Holy Spirit will speak to us through the word of God, right? So if you wanna learn God's voice, you gotta learn his word, you gotta learn his customs, you gotta learn how he um, moved, how he spoke. You gotta learn these things for yourself so then you can understand when the Spirit is telling you things, right? A lot of times, when we don't understand God, we have unctions. And our unction is maybe I should read the word. Maybe I shouldn't go to that party. Maybe I shouldn't do this tonight. Maybe I should cut that girl off. Maybe I should cut them friends off. Maybe I should stop smoking. We start having these unctions, right? And it's up to us to actually follow it, but then not just follow it, but begin to meditate on scripture, but begin to see God. Because if you don't have any substance, if you don't have any substance, and I'm gonna talk about what I mean by substance. If you don't have any substance, then you're just not gonna go anywhere. When the wind comes, when the tribulation comes, when the temptation comes, you're gonna be tossed to and fro because you don't have any substance. In Matthew 7 and 24, it says, Jesus said, therefore, whosoever heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. He goes on to say, because when the floods came and the winds came, that man's house stood firm because he had substance. The substance was he listened to the words of God. He was built in the word of God. That is the substance that I'm speaking about. If you are if you are empty, meaning you don't have the word of God living inside of you and changing your mind and changing you then you will be tempted and you will fall into that temptation. Temp temptation will always come, but when you don't have the foundation of the word of God, you will always fall because all you're doing is repenting with no substance. Let me tell y'all something. When I was literally leaving, I talk about this all the time. I was leaving my girlfriend's house, my ex-girlfriend's house. Okay, and God told me, I literally heard it was weird. I wasn't praying. I wasn't doing nothing. You know, I just heard you need to leave her alone or things are going to go downhill for you. Okay. This is what I heard. And it shocked me to the core, 
but my treasure was so much into this relationship and so much into this girl that I heard a literal audible voice that did not come from me. I ignored it because my heart was treasured on this girl, okay? Uh, thank Jesus, you know what I'm saying, that I went through that relationship and then I ended up giving my life to God and all that and so forth. But you can actually save yourself now if you just listen to the voice of God, listen to the unctions, listen to what God is trying to tell you um, in this hour. You know what I'm saying? This is very, very important. This is very, very uh, critical of you to do this. You know what I'm saying? You need to work. You need to do this uh, swiftly, right? I didn't see any change in my life um, until I actually started applying the word of God into my life. Until I actually started reading the word of God. Until I started developing my prayer life. Until I started developing a fasted, you know what I'm saying? Um, or fast, I'm sorry. And so I started developing like fasting when I felt led, when the Holy Spirit was telling me to fast and things like that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we can, we actually feel like we're supposed to fast, but then we just don't fast. We put it off or maybe we fasted for like an hour or two. Then we end up slipping up or we just get real unfocused. But, you know, that comes with, you know, first starting out and first giving your life to Christ. Even when you first start reading the word of God, you get real, real tired. You know what I'm saying? You start wanting to kind of go to bed. You start wanting to kind of quit, but you got to just do it. Show up every single day. Like you going to the gym or like you playing basketball, just show up every day, you know, ready to read. Let's say if you did read 10 minutes one day, but your goal is to read 30 minutes, it's okay. There is no condemnation for the righteous. There's no condemnation for the person who is seeking righteousness. Okay. So the next day show up, get your 20 minutes in the next day, show up, get your 30 minutes in, right. And just kind of consistently do that 30 minutes of reading the word of God, consistently do that 30 minutes of praying. You know what I'm saying? If you mess up one day, it is okay. But as long as you are doing these things, that is when God will move. God is not just going to, God is not just going to change you. He gave us free will. OK, now, you know, it would have been cool if, if maybe we didn't have free will. Right. You know what I'm saying it, it would have been easy. Right. But that's not how it goes. It is literally up to you. OK, Jesus Christ died on the on our cross so that we could have a will where we can actually serve him. OK, and that we wouldn't be condemned forever because without Jesus, we're all condemned. But with Jesus, with Jesus, we are righteous. Through Jesus, through him dying on the cross, you are made righteous. So I hope that this video puts some things into perspective for you all so you could kind of understand you need to get on your stuff. Stop trying to figure out if you need to go to a certain leader. You need to search up all these different pastors on YouTube and maybe they can pray for me. Maybe I can get into their mentorship program and all this stuff. Nine times out of 10, these people are looking for a check. You need to learn who God is for yourself. They will not be there with you on judgment day. It's going to be you and God and your life attesting against you or for you. So remember these words and just put it into perspective. I pray that these words blessed you guys in the name of Jesus and that you guys' eyes were open according to Ephesians 1 and 18. The eyes of you guys' understanding being light that you may know what the riches and the glory of his inheritance is in the saints. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.